Hey, welcome back. In this video, what we want to do is we want to find the reaction force here on this cantilever beam that is resulting from putting on a parabolic distributed load. So if you remember from the last videos, the way that we find, the way that we do this is we want to find the total magnitude of the force caused by the distributed load, and then also the location of the centroid, and then we'll use that uh, in our, we'll use those numbers in our force balance and our uh, sum of moments equations. So just to get the area under this curve, we just have to integrate it. So we're going to take the integral uh, from 0 to 4 of x squared dx. And that's going to give us, uh, we'll do the reverse power rule here on this x squared. So we'll get 1 third x to the power of 3 on the interval of 0 to 4. And then if we just plug those numbers in, we get one-third times four cubed minus one-third times zero cubed. Obviously this goes to zero and uh, we're left with four cubed divided by three and that's going to give us 21.33 repeating and that's a unit of kilonewtons here when we have meters by kilonewton meters. All right, uh, now the other thing that we need to do is we need to locate the centroid. Um, the centroid of a parabola is three quarters of the way away from the small side and one quarter of the way away from the tall side so that x bar really sits in. Uh, the centroid is here, again, making its x bar, uh, it would be sitting uh, three meters from that side and uh, and one meter from that side. Now if you forget that and you need to derive this on a test, uh, we did this in the last video and uh, you can just see this is the this is the work that we do for it. So if you ever forget where the centroid of a shape is you can uh, you can always just use this equation here to find the location of x bar or similarly for y bar if we're dealing with horizontally applied loads you just switch it up for y bar and put a y there. All right, so now that we have all the information that we need, uh, we just want to go ahead with our force balance here and solve for the reactions. So the sum of forces in the x direction is, uh, well, let's draw on the, the forces we have here. We're going to have, uh, let's call this point A. So we're going to have a reaction force uh, for AY. We'll have a reaction force for AX. And we'll also have, uh, because this is a cantilever, uh, or a rigid support, we'll also have a moment here, so we'll call that MA. So for the sum of forces in the x direction, uh, the only horizontal force we have is AX, and that's equal to zero. So AX, there's just there's no horizontal reaction going on here. So for the force, uh, sum of forces in the y direction, then we're just going to have AY pointing up, minus uh, the total force caused by the distributed load going down, which was 21.33 kilonewtons. 21.33 kilonewtons, and that's all equal to zero. So the, hors or the vertical reaction then, Ay, is just going to be equal to 21.33 kilonewtons pointing up. And then for our sum of moments, we have, let's say, our sum of moments about point A, and we'll give it that positive sense there. We're going to have the moment that's uh, th the moment about A that's caused by the distributed force, and that is the total force from the distributed force passing through that centroid. So we have uh, 21.33 kilonewtons. That's the total magnitude of the distributed force times the distance to point A, which is one meter. And then we have, uh, in the opposite sense here, we have the actual reaction there, so MA. And that's all going to be equal to zero. So if we just bring MA over to the other side, uh, then we're going to see that uh, MA is actually just conveniently, it's just going to be 21.33 kilonewton meters uh, in that clockwise sense.